Hi everyone, today we're going to look at this USB dummy load. Now this is basically just two huge resistors on a regular USB connection with a switch here to switch between 1 amp and 2 amp. There's no cooling so it does get pretty warm. So what's the idea of this? What would you use this for? Well basically if you had a power bank which is a USB power bank or an AC wall adapter and you wanted to verify if it can really output 1 amp or 2 amp then this is what you'd use it for because when you plug in your cell phone you can't guarantee that your cell phone is going to pull a certain rate. For instance, if the battery already has a high charge or if it's, say, warm, for example, that can lower how much power it tries to draw. Whereas with this dummy load, you're always guaranteed that it's going to try and draw either 1 amp or 2 amp. So it's a very good way of testing. Now, of course, aside from the dummy load itself, you need some way of measuring that power. For instance, this small USB watt meter. Basically, you plug this into your power supply, for instance, this power bank, and then you plug your dummy load into this and it will tell you how much power is being drawn. So if I plug that in you can see it's at 4.94 volts and it's drawing around 0.92 amp so if I wanted to know if this can really output say 1 amp or 2 amp this is the best way to test if I flick it to the 2 amp option you'll see that we're managing to draw 1.6 amp but the voltage has dropped significantly to a level where it might be okay, but it probably wouldn't be. Now, then we actually sell this as being rated for one amp. So I'm actually surprised it went as high as it just did. So let's test some of these AC USB adapters and see if they can actually output what they say they can. So I'm gonna start with this Apple brand one, which is meant to be able to output two amp. Now, one thing to note is that there's no cooling on this, so it will get extremely hot. And if you're gonna run it for a long time, you'd certainly want to add additional cooling, for instance, a fan blowing over this. So we'll start with the one amp setting and you'll see we're drawing just under one amp, pretty close enough basically. And if we swap to the two amp option, you can see we're drawing 1.85 and it's pretty much at five volts. So we've got very little voltage drop and we're nearly at two amps. So that's actually very good. That pretty much passes the test. So now we're gonna test this KTEC, which is pretty much a generic. It's meant to output two amp. So you can see we're actually outputting 5.14 volts, 0.96 amp, which is pretty good. And if we flick over to the two amp option, yeah, very good. We're still over five volts and we've got 1.89 amp. So that actually did better than the Apple one that's producing more power. Now, just a word of warning, these pins on here are actually pretty sharp. They've just burst right through my finger. So be careful if you do get one. We're now gonna try out this Anker Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 adapter. Now this can actually hit higher voltages and higher amperages. But of course, this is just a USB 2.0 load. So I'm expecting just to see one or two amp at five volts. So let's plug in our dummy load. And you can see we're at 5.11 volts and 0.96 amp, which is fine and switch to the two amp mode. 5.17 volts, 1.92 amp, so absolutely no problems at all there. Now we have an Amazon adapter, pretty generic, but it is branded Amazon, and it's meant to output one amp maximum. So we're currently at 5.26 volts and 0.99 amp, so pretty much spot on. If we try the two amp section, I'm guessing it's not gonna work. Yep, there you go, just turned off completely. So it really can only output up to one amp. Now we have the Google Chromecast charger. Again, this is meant to be a one amp charger. So we're getting 5.11 volts, 0.96 amp, which seems fine. Let's try the two amp setting. And there you go, it's managed to draw just, well, nothing basically, the voltage dropped to 2.8 volts. So yeah, it really can only handle one amp. Now let's try this Asus power bank since it's meant to output up to 2.4 amp. So let's try this out. Currently at just under five volts, 0.3 amp, that's okay. Switch to the two amp setting, just under five volts, 1.84. So yep, that passes without any issue. It's close enough, basically. Now let's try this Voxlink power bank. I have absolutely no doubt that this will manage because this thing is fantastic. Let's plug in our dummy load, turn on the power bank. 4.88 volts, 1.82 amp. Switch to the one amp setting. 5 volts, 0.94. So, yep, of course, it manages it with absolutely no problem as well. Now, I mentioned that this gets extremely hot in operation, and I'm going to show you that now. So, I've got it set to the 2 amp setting, and I'm going to plug it into my power bank. And there you go. Thanks to my Fleur 1 thermal camera, you should be able to see that it's heating up pretty quickly. Now, I wouldn't want to leave this running like this for too long without pointing a fan at it. So, you can see it's still climbing. We're already at 80 degrees coming up to 85. Now I've got this fan here and I'm curious to see how much this helps. So I'm gonna point it at the 
USB dummy load and see if we can drop the temperature a bit. Okay, we're still climbing faster than I would like. Okay, that seems to be helping. No. So you can see we're at 110 degrees and this fan is not really doing much. I was expecting this to help a lot more than this. Okay, 115 degrees. Let's see what happens if I turn off the fan, if we see a big spike. Yeah, I think that's gonna run away. Let's get this back on. So that's actually getting a lot hotter than I expected. We've already hit over 120 degrees Celsius. And this fan doesn't seem to be doing a lot to help it cool down. In comparison, if I put my hand in the way of the sensor, you can see it's reading around 39 degrees Celsius. And if I recalibrate just to make sure that's okay, There you go, you can see that it is pretty accurate. Now you might be thinking that's insanely hot, but the room that I'm in right now is insanely hot, so I could believe it. So there you go, that's something to consider with these dummy loads. Calling them is going to be pretty difficult, because if you want to run this for a long time, you've got to make sure that these don't overheat. So there are other ones on the market that do have cooling on board, so you might want to consider that instead of this one. Now I've got to try and get this out without burning my fingers. There we go. Let's see how long it takes to cool. So the temperature is dropping pretty rapidly. So there, that's the USB dummy load. Now the connector here isn't too hot to handle, so most of the heat really is contained within the resistors themselves, even this back plate isn't that warm. Now aside from simply checking if your power bank can output one amp or two amp, there's another useful thing with these. If you use a watt meter which can measure the milliamp hour that you've consumed, then you can actually put these together to measure the capacity of your power bank. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. So if you want to see that video, click here now. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.